Turit Sayer, together with her teenage sons, Magne and Lauritz, returned to the Norwegian city of Edda after many years of absence. At the entrance to the city, their car gets stuck behind an old man in an electric wheelchair who is trying to turn right. Magne gets out of the car to help, and the old man's wife approaches him. Looking into the guy's eyes, she smiles with satisfaction, he's a good boy, and then she touches his forehead. Magne's iris changes color for a moment, and then the guy feels something unusual in the perception of the world. He returns to the car and, trying to close the window, breaks off the window lifter handle. Stunned, Magne turns the thing in his hands and suddenly says that it's going to rain. Mother and brother laugh, there is not a cloud in the sky, and immediately the car is showered with a heavy rain. They continue on their way and get to their grandmother's old house. Lauritz is not happy that there is a shabby-looking trailer near the house, and Magne picks up an advertisement that calls for making the air of the city cleaner. The next morning, the guys go to school. Oddly enough, the brothers are assigned to the same class. The thing is, Magne is dyslexic, which is expressed by difficulties with word recognition and insufficient abilities in reading and writing. Magne's attention is immediately drawn to a pretty blonde, Gry, but Lauritz is ahead of him. And Magne has to sit in the back of the class, next to Isolde, who is not popular at school. A lesson on the Scandinavian gods begins, and Magne learns that Edda is the last Norwegian city to convert to Christianity. It was here that Ragnarok took place, during which the gods died, and the fate of the giants remained unknown. During lunch, Magne sits at Isolde's desk again and learns that she's on the side of the Greens and is fighting against the pollution of the world. She also introduces the guy to Fjord Utul as son of the owner of the Utul Industries factories, Fjord's sister Saxa and their mother, the director of the school by the name of Ran. And then she talks about her blog on YouTube. At the end of the classes, the two leave school together and then Isolde notices that one of the wheels in her bicycle is bent. Much to the girl's astonishment, Magne easily fixes the brake and returns the wheel to its original condition, which surprises him as well. In addition, he notices that his eyesight has begun to improve. The next day, he, Isolde and Gry get a general assignment in sociology and begin to study democracy. Magne suggests studying the topic by using their town as an example. At this moment, he sees his mother, who has come to talk to the director. The women discuss boys' progress at school and recall the tragedy that happened many years ago when the boy's father died under mysterious circumstances. Later, the mother notices that Magne is not wearing any glasses and does not understand how this can be. But she's distracted by Vitar Utul's car. It turns out that she and Vitar have known each other for a long time. After returning home, Vidar tells his wife Ran about the meeting with the woman, while their children Fjord and Saxa discuss their appearance and whether it matches their age. Vidar gives them a task to follow Magne, who is currently engaged in repairs and notices a rune carved on his father's tools. Later, the guy visits Isolde's page and looks through her materials about the strange death of the fish in the fjord. The next day, the girl invites him to her place and reminds him that he no longer needs glasses. While choosing water in the store, she explains to Magne that he can't drink tap water in Edda, and the store clerk suddenly warns the guy about the danger of the vernal equinox. In Isolde's house, the guy finds out that the history teacher, Erich, is the girl's father. At dinner, she invites him to go with her to the mountain, as she monitors the speed at which the glacier is melting. They can go down by paragliding. The girl asks her father questions about her mother's death, but he keeps silent. Magne shares his memories of his father, and sweeping the girl's diary off the table, finds out that she has been hopelessly in love with Saxa for a long time. The next day, he tells his classmates about the upcoming hike in the mountains, while Fior invites everyone to a party at his house. Returning home, Magne finds his mother repairing the fence, and his attention is drawn to his father's sledgehammer marked with the rune. The next day, Magne and Isolde go to the mountains. Soon they reach a blocked bridge, but Magne resolutely steps over the warning sign. Suddenly, the boy gets a text that his mother is unwell. He hurries to the city, and Isolde goes on alone. Meanwhile, Vidar's car is driving along the mountain road. Stopping on the side of the road, Vidar goes outside, undresses, and starts hunting deer grazing on the mountain. With one blow, he kills the animal and rips out its heart. Meanwhile, Isolde reaches the glacier and sees her marks. She takes water samples and then notices the thawed entrance to the cave and photographs it. 
Once inside, she finds a door blocking the entrance to the depth of the cave. Standing over the fjord, Vidar eats the raw heart of the deer and emits a heart-rending cry, which frightens Isolde. Upon reaching home, Magne discovers that his mother is absolutely fine and, angry at his brother's stupid joke, goes outside. He sees Isolde paragliding down the mountain. Suddenly, the paraglider starts drifting towards electric wires. The guy hurries to the crash site and finds the girl's lifeless body. Vidar also arrives and tries to help her and then calls for an ambulance. But nothing can be done anymore. Returning home, Magne throws away his glasses and sees the sledgehammer. The distraught guy throws the hammer and it disappears into the clouds, which are instantly covered with lightning. After everything that happened, Magne is taking the death of her friend hard and decides never to wear glasses again. The classmates ask a lot of questions about the girl's death, but he can't say anything definite. He enters the classroom and sits down at the desk whose second half is covered with flowers and burning candles. Ren makes an announcement that there will be no history class today, but suddenly Isolde's father enters the classroom. He cannot stay at home alone. The man asks the school not to cancel the vernal equinox holiday because Isolde would be against such a decision. Later, the police announced that the girl's death was caused by a thunderstorm strike to the dome of the paraglider. But Magne objects, everything happened before his eyes, and there was no thunderstorm at that time. Nevertheless, the case is being closed. On the same day, Vidar asks Stuart to get the insurance money for his car, which was smashed by some madman. And he sends the woman photos in which Stuart recognizes the sledgehammer. She hurries home to ask Magne questions, but he himself is shocked by such an accusation. The guy calculates how far he threw the hammer, 1,537 meters, but this is impossible. Magne buys a new sledgehammer and throws it in a deserted place late at night. And then he calculates the distance, 541 meters, which is several times higher than the world's record for hammer throwing. Meanwhile, Vidar examines the sledgehammer, while Ran speaks about the experiences of the schoolchildren, who sincerely mourn the dead girl. And then the husband suddenly admits that he killed Isolde because she found the entrance to the cave. The woman gets angry, they agreed not to touch the children. But since it happened, they need to find Isolde's lost phone. At school, Gry and Magne continue to work on the project together and listen to a warning not to blame the destruction of the planet only on the rich. Later at home, sorting out his mother's things, Lauritz finds an old blouse. Magne invites Gry to work at his house, which leads to a heartfelt conversation about Magne's past. Meanwhile, Turid notices Erich in the store looking lost. She expresses sympathy, and the man is grateful to her for it. Lauritz finds Magne watching the weather forecast. Magne insists that there was no thunderstorm the day Isolde died, and then he admits that it was he who threw the sledgehammer into Vida's car. But his brother doesn't believe it. The celebration of the vernal equinox begins at school. The classmates show Saxa a photo of an improvised altar at the site of Isolde's death, while Vidar inspects this area in search of the girl's phone. He notices that Magne is visiting the place too. At school, everyone is shocked by the sight of Lauritz, who came to the evening in his mother's blouse and with makeup. The headmistress opens the evening and offers a moment of silence for Isolde. Saxa sings a song about her native land, which is interrupted by the appearance of Magne. Later, Lauritz advises his brother to forget about Gry, because Fior is already hitting on her. Later, Lauritz starts hitting on Yukutu. Then the headmistress takes the two boys away. Magne sits down with Gry, but Fior invites the girl to a dance, and the guy has nothing to do but sit and watch. Watching them, he crushes the bottle in his hand, and it shatters into small pieces. He goes to the men's room, where he meets Oscar, whose mother is a police officer, and he blurts out that the girl died from hitting a rock. At this time, hot dancing begins in the hall, and Magne sees the headmistress surrounded by boys. Fjord puts on his music, and he and Saxo begin a strange sensual dance, to which Lauritz joins. The three of them squirm on the dance floor, much to the delight and astonishment of the crowd. Magne goes to Isolde's father's house and informs him about the change in the cause of his daughter's death. He is sure that the police are lying, but the inconsolable father asks to not disturb the peace of his dead daughter. Out of anger, Magne easily moves the multi-ton car in front of the house, which terrifies Erich. 
At this time, Fjord, Lauritz and Oscar are going to the altar, and younger Utul, ridiculing people's stupid beliefs, urinates on the burning candles. Oscar manages to record this and upload everything to the internet. Fjord orders the video to be deleted, but it has already gone online. Magne is reviewing numerous notes about violations of environmental regulations by Util Industries, which Eric shows him. And he throws away the girl's diary, because she has the right to personal secrets. And at Util's house, the owner is feeding his dog, when Ren shows him a scandalous photo from the altar. The husband promises to deal with this issue. Sex is trying to find out at least something new about Magne from Gry, who stayed overnight at their house, but she does not know anything. She goes to the bathroom and witnesses Vidar beating his son. The man is furious, people worship them too and sacrifice to them. Therefore his son insulted him with his act too. Frightened, Gry hurries to take refuge in Sax's room. The next day, Isolde's funeral takes place and everyone goes to church, but returning home, the Sayer family finds their home trashed. The brothers go to the homeless neighbor, accusing him of stealing from their house. He admits that he has been in the apartment, but only after another man who arrived there in a big black car accompanied by a dog. The brothers realize that it is Vidar, but do not understand why he needed it. Later, Magne goes to see a therapist. He feels that everything has changed around him, but does not find an explanation for this. He talks about the robbery and accuses the police of inaction. And the therapist tells Ren about the session. Back home, Magne tells his mother about the conversation with the neighbor and blames Vidar. But Turid says that it's absurd and does not want to hear anything about it. Especially since Eric has arrived. He hands his oldies laptop to Magne because his computer is already failing. The guy searches the computer and finds data on changes in natural conditions in the vicinity of Edda. The same evening, Ren tells her husband about the therapy session. She is furious. Not only did Vidar break into Magne's house, but the guy's neighbor saw him. And now everyone can find out about this inexplicable case. The next day, Gry confesses to Fjord that she saw the beating, and it shocked her. But he changes the topic of the conversation. The girl agrees to ride with him, but Lauritz and Saxa are also in the car. Meanwhile, Magne is talking to a police representative again. He knows for sure that there was no wind that day, but the woman objects. He said that he got to the city in half an hour, and no one can do that. The young people are driving along a mountain road, and Fjord puts on a song in the ancient Icelandic language, which is surprising to Gry. Suddenly, a bird breaks against the windshield of the car. Saxa and Fjord come out to look at it. The sister reminds them of the need to learn at least something about Magne and eats the bird. Puzzled by the officer's words, Magne goes to a deserted warehouse and starts jogging to see how fast he runs. He does a 100 meter dash in just 7 seconds. Meanwhile, Eric has given Isolde's jacket, which has traces of blood on it, and Vidar follows Magne and witnesses an accident in which the guy is hit by a snowplow. He joyfully announces to the family about Magne's death, who interfered with their affairs. Then Vidar confesses to the children that he killed Isolde, because she found dangerous things hidden by them in the glacier. Ren reminds them of the danger they are exposed to by getting close to mortals. Meanwhile, the doctors at the hospital are perplexed. The guy who was hit by the snowplow has no injuries at all. Magne goes home, and he doesn't know that at this very moment, the body of his deceased neighbor, who was a witness to the robbery of their house, was being brought to the morgue. At home, Turid thanks the gods for saving her child's life. And Magne makes another note, he is now also invulnerable. His sight and sense of smell also have improved. The next day, during the lesson, there is a skirmish, when Magne blames the Util plants for the emissions of harmful substances, which caused the inhabitants of the fjord to die. Saxa resolutely defends her father. After the lesson, Magne asks the teacher to test the dried blood from his oldie's jacket. He is sure that there's someone else's blood on the clothes. At least they smell different. The woman is surprised by his sense of smell and agrees to run the test. Later, Gry asks him questions about the incident. He shows her the jacket and asks her to smell it. But the girl does not detect the difference at all. In the afternoon, a group of classmates goes to a cafe, where Oscar breaks the news about Rand's behavior the previous evening, which he learned about from his friends. Saxa is outraged by the silly rumors and stirs the conversation towards Gry, who is still a virgin. 
This pisses Gry off, and she goes home, where she finds her father in front of a can of beer. The man is upset. The insurance company refused to pay him money for his sick lungs. No one sees the connection between the disease and the emissions from the U-Tool factories. Meanwhile, Vidar is raging in his house. No mortal could have survived. Who is this guy? To which Ren promises to find out everything very soon, since in the evening the brothers will come to them for dinner. Magne and Lauritz go to the Util house, unaware that they are the only guests of the evening. They are seated at a chic table and are treated to alcoholic drinks. The hosts do not skimp on the drinks. Vidar pours Magne mead, the drink of the ancient gods. Feeling intoxicated, Magne begins to behave inappropriately, and throwing an axe at the target hanging on the wall simply breaks it. And then he confides in Ren about his new strength. The woman is surprised and offers to fight with her hands. The guy promises to defeat her and holds out his hand. They begin to fight, and Magne realizes that he cannot defeat the fragile-looking woman. They fight without restraining themselves, and at some point he suddenly sees the true appearance of an ancient monster hiding behind the guise of the beauty. At this moment, the table breaks down. Jumping up from behind the wreckage, Magne sees the woman in front of him again. He goes to the bathroom, and after washing his face, looks up at the mirror and suddenly sees the face of an ancient warrior staring back at him. Coming up next, a recap of the following episodes.